I mean, just look at this video. Who wouldn't want it to be their webcam, right? Well, eh, maybe. So this mm, chunky camera right here is the Panasonic Lumix GH5S. It's a beautiful video camera, and if you want to use it as a webcam, Without a capture card, you finally have an option. Today we're covering the Lumix Tether for Streaming beta app. Panasonic released to catch up with, uh, what was it? <laughs> Fuji and Canon and GoPro, which we'll talk about in another video, for being able to use your big mirrorless camera as a webcam without the need for a capture card. However, I will say you might probably get better results using a capture card like this cheap little $20 one I reviewed, link in the description below. We're gonna cover the differences and how to set it up in today's video right after this. So you've been searching, hunting for that perfect stream element, for that perfect layout that will make your stream truly professional looking, but you don't have the budget once you find it. Well, no more. Nerd or Die is having a summer sale. I was about to call it a Steam summer sale. <laughs> They're not Steam. Uh, you can get 20% off store-wide, including their bundles of graphics using coupon code SUMMER20 and my link in the description below. You can get $5 stream layouts, and you can get their new clutch alert pack for super cheap as well to really supercharge your live stream today. Head over on to eposvox.gg slash nerd or die and use coupon code SUMMER20. <laughs> So if you were unaware, a lot of camera manufacturers have been releasing software that utilize the tethering preview that a camera can provide over USB, be it a DSLR, a mirrorless, what have you. They all support tether, tethered shooting, which means connecting to your computer via USB and then using that to control the settings and to initiate video or mainly photo capture and things like that. Like if you see someone doing a stand up photo booth or whatever, usually they have a laptop connected and do all of the camera controls there. That, that way they don't have to mess with the camera itself. That's a one way that people shoot video. Well, that does technically provide a video preview. And since these cameras are not set up to act as UVC webcam devices like actual webcams or capture cards in order to use them for streaming or for content creation or for video chatting in Zoom, Skype and what have you, you need something to take that preview and translate it into your video chatting software. Unfortunately, Panasonic's way requires actually using OBS and a bit of a hacky workaround to make this work. So in order to set this up, you will need two things. Firstly, you will need the Lumix Tether for streaming beta. This only supports a few specific newer cameras, the GH5, the GH5S, the G9, and then the S1, S1R, and S1H cameras. I tried using the software with my Panasonic G85 and it did not work, and Panasonic G7s are completely out of the picture because they don't even have USB connectivity. So, kind of a bummer, this is super limited, but if you have one of these cameras, I just got this GH5S rig set up for myself, I am loving it. Uh, you can pr proceed. You will need your serial number for the software as well. Panasonic software downloads are pretty crazy. So you go to the link in the video description, it's software download, and then it will ask for your serial number to download the software. This is currently only available for Windows as well, and you will need to update the firmware of the camera in order to support this functionality. Thankfully, they even have notes here that say the tethering software was primarily designed for still photography. You won't have all the same features. The quality won't be the same. They, they give you a little bit of a forewarning of what you're actually going to end up with here. So go ahead and choose your camera model. And again, I tried using this with my GH5S serial on a G85 and it did not work at all. Like it, it's specifically built for these cameras and there's no firmware for the G85 to support this. Anyway, go ahead and choose your camera and then put in your serial number. It's gonna be awkward because my camera is mounted in a cage right now. Um, that's gonna be a little awkward to get to. I guess I will do this here real quick. Ugh. Oh, cool. I'm pretty sure my serial number is under my cage mounting point. Uh, the second software you will need is OBS Virtual Cam. It is a plugin for OBS Studio. Obviously, you will need OBS Studio itself. Uh, this is a plugin that basically allows OBS to output as a webcam device to Skype, Zoom, Discord, and so on. And so you need to download and install this plugin into your OBS installation directly directory. If you already have OBS open, you will need to relaunch it. So let's go ahead and install the Lumix Tether for streaming software. This is going to be a different version from the normal Lumix Tether software. Accept the agreement. Yada yada. Now we're going to go ahead and connect our camera. For this, you will need a USB Type-C connection for most of these cameras. I'm pretty sure they all use USB Type-C. You probably don't need to use an actual USB 3.0 port 
but I, I would just to be safe, go ahead and connect that through USB. You can see here it is setting up GH5S in the bottom corner. Go ahead and let Windows automatically install the device. It looks like we're good to go. Go ahead and launch your Lumix Tether for streaming app. Go ahead and accept the agreement. This is a really tiny camera preview here. So looking at the software here, you can see we have a few different options. We have shooting options, most of which you will ignore, but then you have your actual camera options. So here I can change the aperture of my lens. I can change my shutter speed and change the mode that the camera is actually, well, the creative mode that the camera is actually in, white balance, ISO, all the normal settings that are required, as well as the resolution and frame rate option for internal recording. We can go ahead and trigger internal recording with this and record internally. That is an option available to us. We go ahead and stop that. However, we don't really want this control menu. menu. Well, okay, apparently closing it closes the entire program, so don't do that. What we want is this live view. We're going to click the square icon here. And that's going to make it bigger and hide the autofocus box. So I'm going to go ahead and point this at myself. I'm going to get some focus action going here. Go ahead and get our settings right. That's good enough for now. Now you need to go into OBS Studio. You're going to add a source going to be a window capture source. I'm going to say GH5S. Click OK. Now, it's, for me, it automatically pulled up the app, but find your Lumix Tether.exe live view window. Pretty much all of that should be fine. You'll want to uncheck capture cursor so you don't worry about your cursor showing up. Click OK. And then you'll want to resize it to fit this window. I have a 1080p window going here. So we're going to kind of resize it a bit to crop off. There's a little bit of a window border at the top. I'm going to crop that off a little bit and just get it centered here and now we have a here you can see here the frame rate is not amazing even though we're over usb3 uh, the live view for this isn't meant to have a smooth fluid frame rate so immediately you can see the downsides of using this method but if this is all you have to work with you don't have a budget to spend on a capture card you can't find any in stock what have you this is technically available to you now to use it in a video chatting app you go up to tools assuming you've installed the virtual cam plugin virtual cam and then pretty much leave everything on default. You can horizontal flip if your image is mirrored for some reason. Mine is not. Keep aspect ratio in case you're using an app that does four by three or whatever. You can leave that unchecked for the best results. Buffered frames, I'd leave that alone. And then you do actually have the ability to initialize more than one virtual camera source. I'm just gonna leave the one and hit start. Now, if I open up my Discord settings, I can go over here to video settings, choose a camera, choose OBS camera and test video. And now I have Discord open with my GH5S as a video camera. That's pretty much all there is. Now you will notice in OBS when I added that window capture source, of course, we are not getting audio from the camera. That is unfortunately not, <laughs> not an option. So neither OBS nor your virtual cam device will get audio. You will need to use a dedicated microphone plugged into your computer in some capacity. Now we're going to record a sample of this real quick again at 1080p. This is a test. This is a test. This is a camera, camera, camera test. Okay. See? But what I'm going to do, just for a point of reference, is I'm going to compare it to what the video quality out of this $20 capture card that I reviewed, $15, $8 in some cases, depending on where you are, capture card. I'll show you what the quality you can get out of that is, because you're going to be pretty shocked. Now, compare that frame rate and quality and all of that to this $20 USB capture card. IMO, it looks a lot better. It's not gonna look as good as some of the more expensive capture card options that I've reviewed on the channel. It has some limitations. We're talking about those more in some upcoming videos, so get subscribed for those. But you have a smooth fluid frame rate up to 60 FPS if desired, or 30 FPS, not really 24 FPS. And you get fairly decent looking video. like. So if, if you want something that's free and easy to set up, but only on Windows, then use the Lumix Tethering for Windows app. Don't spend any money. You're good to go. If you're looking for an option for streaming on both Mac, Windows, or Linux, and you want smoother, higher quality video and even audio support, I'll have a link to my review of this capture card in the description below. If you're interested in the whole capture card scene to get even more out of it, I have even more capture card reviews linked in the video description as well. So that's, that's it. <laughs> this is... Two ways you can use your Panasonic GH5, GH5S, G9, or S1, S1R, or S1H mirrorless cameras as webcams within your computer. I, I had a lot of people complain last time when I covered the Canon and the Fuji app that I didn't cover the limitations of what you can actually do with these apps, because as you can see, the frame rate is quite limited. So I wanted to show that here for you and generally 
show you the whole setup hope you enjoyed this video hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe for more tech education and stream guides go check out all the videos i mentioned in the description below and i'll see you in the next one come join us on discord if you have any questions about setting this up eposfox.gg discord